Thank you, Orhan. <clears throat> Uh, uh, over the time, uh, the role attributed to frontal lobe gradually expanded from pure motor tasks to higher cognitive functions, as mentioned, uh, Professor Dufo, and uh, DTI techniques, uh, neuroanatomical studies, and neurophysiological studies have demonstrated the major role of uh, subcortical connection pathways in these higher cognitive functions. So um, today in this presentation, uh, we emphasize on uh, functional, per functional uh, parcellation of uh, frontal surface and its uh, subcortical connections. As you know, uh, the posterior limitations of the frontal lobe, lateral side frontal lobe is uh, central sulcus, and uh, inferior limitations uh, limitation is uh, lateral sulcus. And uh, on the lateral surface, the two main sulcus, the superior frontal sulcus and the inferior uh, frontal sulcus, which lie horizontally, as you see, uh, to the presental sulcus, uh, separate the superior, middle, and the inferior frontal gyrus anterior to the presental gyrus, as you see. And uh, uh, by dividing the inferior frontal gyrus of the short anterior ascending branch of the lateral sulcus into three parts, we see the um, pars orbitalis uh, sitting on the orbital roof and pars triangularis just located uh, posterior to the pars orbitalis. And we see the pars opercularis just in front of the uh, presential gyrus. When we look at the inferior surface of the frontal lobe, the olfactory bulb uh, and the concave area lateral to the tract contain a series of sulci uh, that together form an H-shaped uh, configurations. Uh, this H sulcus divides this area into uh, uh, four orbital uh, gyri, and uh, we see the anterior, posterior, and medial, and lateral orbital gyrus. And the fifth orbital gyrus, is gyrus rectus, is located lateral to the uh, olfactory sulcus. And uh, when we locate the medial surface, uh, the frontal lobe is separated from the limbic lobe, uh, singlet gyrus by the uh, singlet sulcus, and posteriorly, the posterior border is the uh, frontal lobe in medial side, uh, the continuation of the central sulcus, as you know. And uh, frontal pole, we see the frontal pole is located in front of the frontal marginal sulcus. We see the frontal marginal sulcus, and it consists of the anterior part of the three longitudinal frontal gyri, superior, uh, middle, and the inferior frontal gyri, and orbital frontal gyrus, and uh, the gyrus rectus medially. Uh, sorry. On the lateral surface, the frontal cortex can be divided into two broad functional uh, regions. Uh, the motor cortex and the uh, prefrontal cortex, uh, connected uh, prefrontal cortex. And also the motor cortex is divided into two functional regions, primary and non-primary uh, motor cortex. We see the primary motor cortex and this area uh, is also known as the Brodmann area four. Uh, and uh, this region, uh, the primary motor cortex characterized by having long accents uh, forming corticonuclear and corticospinal fibers. And in this way, uh, it has a direct connection with the brainstem and spinal cord uh, for uh, primary motor cortex. And uh, in motor homunculus, we see the motor uh, homunculus, our hands and our facial muscles, which can perform finely controlled and the consecutive movements are represented in a wider area in the prim uh, primary motor cortex. The premotor area, which covers the lateral part of the Brodmann area, and just in front of the primary cortex, uh, we see and uh, this, reg this region that covers the posterior part of the superior, uh, middle, and inferior uh, frontal gyrus, and it consists of the supplementary motor area and uh, dorsolateral uh, prefrontal cortex. We see the supplementary motor area, this is the SMA complex, and uh, we see the dorsolateral premotor cortex. Uh, 
Uh, a number of smaller areas are definite for each of the three main subdivision, uh, subdivisions of a uh, field of uh, six area. Uh, we see the frontal eye fields uh, uh, more related with the saccadic eye movements and uh, it's located on the uh, posterior part of the uh, middle frontal gyrus. And caudal uh, premolar uh, regions uh, projects both the uh, uh, primary motor cortex and the sensory area uh, areas in the parietal lobe. And uh, these association connections are concentric and consecutive. Uh, the area containing these somatosensory connections was uh, also uh, described by Marcel Mezulam as a motor uh, association center. So uh, it also known the Mezulam's um, motor, motor uh, association center. And does the premotor cortex uh, provide a cognitive support to the uh, primary motor cortex and this connection system uh, has a role in planning the movement, choosing the movement against the external stimulus. And Russell, when we look at the Russell uh, premotor regions, the most anterior part of the premotor regions we see, take their main efference from the prefrontal cortex and they can also be called the prefrontal dependent uh, premotor regions. These, uh, th these anterior part of the uh, prefrontal areas afferents uh, project throughout the caudal premotor uh, regions to the primary uh, motor cortex. It's, uh, this system also known as the prefrontal premotor pathways and uh, it plays, uh, this system plays a role in highly cognitive processes uh, such as the emotional and visual motor uh, processing, uh, inhibiting the action, uh, updating action plans, and object integration. Uh, when we look at the medial surface uh, of uh, premotor pre area, we see the SMA complex in the premotor area, anatomically located in the posterior part of the superior frontal gyrus, and its borders are formed uh, by the precentral sulcus posteriorly. We see the presental sulcus uh, by the single sulcus inferior medially and in little uh, sites by the superior frontal sulcus imperial laterally. As you know, the resection or damage to the SMA complex produce a negative uh, motor response and negative uh, speech motor response known as uh, SMA uh, syndrome. Uh, most cases of SMA syndrome are usually reversible after surgery owing the cortical plasticity and uh, compensation mechanism uh, via, uh, via the contratal SMA complex. <clears throat> Functionally, it's divided into two parts. The caudal part is called uh, SMA proper and uh, the rostral part is called uh, pre-SMA. Uh, due to its the short association connection with the primary motor cortex, Posteriorly, and it's a direct cortical spinal connection. The SMA proper is more related to a somatic organization, such as a smoothness of movement, activation of movement, control of movement, production of movement. And however, the pre SMA is more related to somatic sensory organization due to the, uh, its prefrontal connections, such as a memory storage, learning, time perception, uh, transition between actions. Uh, and more than uh, high cognitive functions. Uh, in summary, premotor cortex provides cognitive support to the primary motor cortex. So our primitive movements evolve into the high cognitive movements. For example, this cognitive support is needed to use gestures in um, performing arts. Uh, and, um, I think it's the best uh, example for this uh, condition. The prefrontal cortex, we see the prefrontal cortex is separated from the motor and the premotor regions by the presence of a, um, pro a prominent inner granular layer and strong interconnections with the medial dorsal thalamic nucleus. Uh, thanks to these reciprocal interconnections, it can take on tasks such as sleep, driving, uh, motivation, uh, emotion regulation and executive functions, working memory and attention, and we see the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex uh, 
uh, it's not an atomical structure. It's not uh, an atomical um, definition. Uh, it's a functional uh, definition. It's located in the middle frontal gyrus of humans. Its largest area is in the middle frontal gyrus and it corresponds to the uh, <clears throat> nine and 42 uh, Broadman areas, 46 Broadman areas. And uh, we see the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex is located in the Broadman 47. Uh, area just in front of the pars triangularis and below the inferior frontal sulcus. Um, in the non-dominant hemisphere, right side, uh, ventrolateral uh, prefrontal cortex has a critical role. Uh, it's active during the motor in inhibition. For example, the person uh, stops suddenly while walking, the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex takes action uh, to stop the, the uh, motor activity. And another uh, part of the functional part of the uh, ventral, ventral lateral uh, prefrontal cortex is Broca area, as you know. Uh, the Broca area, uh, <clears throat> Broca's area corresponds to 44 and 45, and located on uh, parts opercularis and uh, triangularis is in the dominant hemisphere, and it's found more often in the parts triangularis. And uh, if it's damaged and uh, broca aphasia can occur, it's if it, the broca area is damaged and uh, it has uh, some components such as the non-fluent, uh, effortless talk and the impaired repetition and relatively conservative comprehension. <clears throat> the frontal polar cortex, we see the frontal polar cortex is most rostral part of the uh, superior frontal gyrus and the middle frontal gyrus. Uh, it's uh, functionally suspected of being related to working memory and behavioral disorders and uh, our personality. Uh, we see the orbitofrontal cortex uh, correspond to Broadman 10, 11, and uh, 47, and it's sitting on the frontal base, as you know, and uh, uh, it's related to uh, social engagement uh, behaviors, um, evaluating, inhibiting, or taking action on social and emotional information, and it provides decision-making for us and uh, reward systems, and uh, it's related to uh, behavioral disorders. Uh, we see the ventromedial uh, prefrontal cortex and uh, dorsomedial prefrontal cortex. Uh, the medial prefrontal cortex includes the, the medial part of the uh, nine and uh, 10, anterior limbic area, uh, prelimbic area, and the infralimbic area. Uh, and this uh, medial prefrontal cortex may lead to making a decision, regulation of em emotions, gender-specific social behavior. Uh, it it's found that the ventromedial prefrontal cortex in, uh, of cocaine uh, users have lower than normal activity and uh, it's, uh, this region has been shown to be unusually inactive in people with uh, psychological dissociation. <clears throat> let, us, uh, let me now examine uh, the subcortical connections of the frontal lobe with a white uh, frontotemporal uh, craniotomy. We see the cortex after removing the arachnoids and the appearance of U fibers after decortication, it was uh, mentioned in detail yesterday by Professor uh, Tan Rever uh, in detail. As you know, the U fibers are short association fibers and between the neighboring gyri. And um, as short association fibers, we, we, we not decorticate the SMA complex and the parts of Pericularis now. And uh, a short association fiber bundle between the SMA complex um, deep in the presental, uh, it's, it's pr uh, proceeds deep in the uh, presental sulcus and uh, reach to the uh, posteriorly uh, primary motor cortex. And it's an important short association uh, connection between the SMA proper and the primary motor cortex. <clears throat> After the uh, short association fibers are removed, uh, we see the SLF2, uh, frontal part of the SLF2, uh, the first long association fiber bundle laterally. The uh, SLF2, uh, the middle pathway courses between the angular and the middle frontal gyri. Uh, at the level of the upper edge of the atrium and the body of the lateral ventricles. 
functionally, the SLF2 is related to regulation of the special uh, awareness and in turn damage to the SLF2 may result in disorders, uh, special working memory and attention, uh, such as a uh, neglect syndrome. Uh, the arcuate fascicles, we see the frontal part, frontal opercular part of the arcuate fascicles. The arcuate fascicle uh, originates from the temporal lobe and the frontal part of the AFE fibers courses medial to the SLF2. We see the medial to the SLF3 uh, and ventral to the SLF2 in the frontal part of operculum to reach the inferior frontal gyrus. Um, damage to the frontal operculum, which contains the frontal part of the uh, arcuate fascicles, can produce aphasia and the dysphagia, uh, as you know. Uh, SLF3 courses between the supramarginal gyrus and parts of operculars, and we see the frontal part of the uh, SLF3 in uh, frontal operculum. Uh, in dominant hemisphere, uh, SLF3 related to the uh, phonological production and working memory. In non-dominant hemisphere, uh, SLF3 uh, takes part in the visual special attention and prosody and music production. So uh, damage to the frontal operculum in uh, SLF3 may result in the anatria and the dysatria. Uh, the frontal ascent tract and oblique link between the SMA complex and uh, parts of percularis. It runs through the medial of the uh, SLF2, uh, and uh, we see the, its relation with the SLF2 in uh, DTI. Uh, it was revealed for the first time in a, a DTI study in uh, 2007 uh, by Marco Catani but its anatomical, anatomical relationship were not clear. Uh, we published its detailed anatomy for the first time in uh, 2016. And functionally, it's related to the, it's, uh, uh, related to the uh, fluent speaking and initiation of the speech. Uh, the frontal striatal tract uh, courses between the SMA, SMA complex and the striatum. We see the, uh, in this specimen, close relationship with the uh, frontal uh, ascent tract and the uh, uh, frontal striatal tract and in DTI, this is the frontal striatal tract. Uh, here we see the close relationship. Um, the frontal striatal, frontal ascent tract comes from the uh, SMA and superficial occurs in the parts of percularis. In contrast, the frontal striatal tract runs medial to the superior limiting sulcus and joins the external capsule and uh, structures. And uh, functionally, uh, in dominant hemisphere, it's related to fluency in speaking and control of voluntary uh, motor uh, movements. In non-dominant hemisphere, uh, it's related to control of voluntary uh, motor movements. Uh, we see the insular cortex after temporal lobe resection. We have proceeds from lateral to medial in the central core. Uh, after decortication, we uh, got external capsule. And uh, when we removed uh, the, um, we got the classroom and cluster cortical fibers. Um, the fibers originate from the classroom and form the dorsal external capsule, proceed between the putamen and the extreme capsule and the distribute the, within the corona radiata. It has a, a wide distribution that includes the pre-SMA in anteriorly, a semi proper primary motor cortex and a posterior part of the parietal lobe in posteriorly. And uh, functionally, it's related to the coordination of visual, auditory, and the motor information and integration of the consciousness and understanding. We see the now uh, Usenet fascicle is also called the frontal temporal fascicle. Uh, it can be uh, examined in three parts, temporal parts, insular parts, and the frontal segments. Uh, it originates from the temporal horn uh, and cortical nucleus of amygdala and proceeds to the Lehman insula. We see the Lehman insula. Uh, at the level of the Lehman insula running under uh, the, the uh, running under the uh, lanterform nucleus and the IFOF, we see the IFOF, and it projects to the lateral orbitofrontal areas, uh, as you see. In uh, 
uh, dominant and non-dominant hemisphere, um, it joined the ventral limbic pathway and it's thought to be related to behavioral uh, disorders. IFOF, uh, inferior frontal occipital uh, fascicles, uh, it connects the frontal and occipital areas at the level of the Lehman insula, just superior to the uh, unisinat fascicles, especially uh, projects on the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex in frontal lobe, and therefore it's effective in some high cognitive functions. Uh, and IFOF, together with the ILF, form a semantic uh, ventral pathway in dominant hemisphere, uh, it plays it, it play a role in the semantic aspect of the language, visual recognition, and multimodal uh, sensory outputs, and uh, damage to the uh, this fiber bundle in dominant hemisphere, especially, may result in the semantic paraphasia uh, in operation or uh, due to any tumor, any uh, lesions. Uh, now, uh, anterior and superior thalamic pedunculate fibers courses in a posterior part of the internal capsule, uh, project to the inferior parietal lobal, uh, the singular gyrus, parahippocampal gyrus, and the prefrontal cortex. Here we see the thalamocortical fibers continuing horizontally. We see the thalamocortical, sorry, thalamocortical fibers. Uh, continue horizontally um, after leaving the internal capsule and distributes the in the frontal uh, cortex, prefrontal cortex. Uh, these fibers have been found to show signifying fractional anisotropy in patients with bipolar disorder. We are uh, at more medial now and we reach the callosal fibers. Uh, this is the callosal fibers that open the ventricle. Uh, we see the caudate nucleus, caudate head, and uh, internal capsule fibers. We dissected the uh, callosal fibers that form the roof of the uh, ventricle and run towards uh, to the uh, opposite sides. After dissected the cingulum, more medially, we saw the singular fibers. Uh, they originate uh, from the cingulum and they are distributed to SMA complex and prefrontal cortex in frontal lobe in medial sites. Uh, functionally, they are the connections between the motor system with the uh, limbic system. Um, it has been stated that it's responsible for the motor response uh, against the special negative emotional stimuli. Uh, now we look at the left hemisphere from medial side. Uh, we see the SLF1. This is the SLF1. Uh, and we can see SLF1 in DTI image. And it connects the uh, superior parietal lobe with the SMA and the anterior cingulat cortex. And functionally, in both hemisphere, uh, it's related to a higher degree of control of body centered movement and initiation of. Um, motor activity. Uh, this is Ajibadam University Case Neuroanatomy Laboratory. Uh, our studies and courses take place here. Uh, well equipment uh, laboratory with the microscopes, endoscopes, and the microsurgical instruments. Uh, I hope uh, we can go back to the days when anatomy uh, courses in person. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube account. Uh, you can find all the lecture, all uh, seminars of our webinar series here. Thank you for your attention.